The show opens up in Sarayashi City in Japan, where a teenager, Yusuke Urameshi, watches his body being taken to the hospital after an accident. His childhood friend, Yukimura Keiko, rushes to the scene while the body is being loaded into an ambulance. Only when a paramedic passes straight through him does he finally realize that he is dead. A flashback from four hours before the incident shows a roundworm monster escaping from a massive sinkhole in Sarayashi City. Meanwhile, at the local school, Yusuke's friend, Kirino, is being bullied by a group of boys. However, the teacher catches Yusuke beating the school bullies, not knowing that he saved the victim. Not bothered to explain himself, our hero simply walks away from the school. When he reaches home, his mother further berates him for being a good-for-nothing son. Fed up with the constant nagging, he heads out for some air. Barely a few minutes later, he is confronted by his arch-nemesis, Kazuma and his gang. But our hero ends up beating them quite easily, leaving Kazuma in a mess. Later that evening, Keiko arrives from school at a local ramen shop where he works part-time. Her friends quickly turn back and head out, as they do not want to be seen in the same place as the notorious Yusuke. However, being his childhood friend, Keiko yells at him for not defending himself in front of the teacher. While all this is happening, the roundworm monster possesses a truck driver and forces him to drive onto the road that Yusuke is on. Later, as Yusuke is walking down the street, he notices that the truck driver is about to crash into a little boy. Alarmed, he pushes the boy away, but ends up getting run over by the truck. Following this, a narration gives us a brief background of the show. Once upon a time, the demon world and the human world were connected. The humans who ventured too close to the demon world were attacked by the malicious spirits called the yokai. With time, the yokai grew bolder and ventured into the human world, attacking anyone they liked. To put an end to the violence, the spirit realm intervened and completely separated the demon and human worlds, or so they thought. This is when the flashback ends and we circle back to the first scene of the show. Yusuke's spirit notices his body being taken away in an ambulance when Botan, the Grim Reaper, shows up. She tells him that his death was not anticipated because the act of saving a young boy was odd for his hooligan personality. Botan then takes Yusuke to the spirit world to meet her boss, Koenma. The mysterious deity with a pacifier in his mouth is in charge of judging a person's life and sending them either to hell or heaven. Koenma promises to reincarnate Yusuke if he agrees to be a detective for the spirit world. A spirit detective's main responsibility is to stop the yokai that are once again invading the human world to cause trouble. However, the moody teenager bluntly refuses the offer because he is certain that everyone he ever knew will be relieved after his death. Meanwhile, we're introduced to Sakyo, the owner of several casinos in Sarayashi town. At one of his places, he meets Gonzo, the same man who sold Sakyo the land containing the massive sinkhole. When asked about why he would buy such land, Sakyo tells Mr. Gonzo that he found a deep hole there one that extends to the demon world. On the other hand, Botan takes Yusuke to visit his funeral. There, he sees numerous people like Kirino, the boy whose life he saved, and even his arch-nemesis, Kazuma, genuinely mourning for him. When everyone leaves, Yusuke sees Keiko and his mother bawling their eyes over his death, which makes him rethink his decisions about being a spirit detective. At the same time, the roundworm monster enters the body of Kirino, who is currently being bullied by Yusuke's classmates near his house. While the roundworm makes the victim beat up the bullies, a fire accidentally breaks out in the area and starts consuming surrounding houses. Kazuma and his gang hear the commotion and make their way towards the spot. After a while, Koenma informs Yusuke that a roundworm monster has possessed a human being and that his home may be threatened. Meanwhile, Yusuke's house is on fire with his dead body still inside. Keiko goes inside the burning home and tries to carry his body out, but everything around her suddenly begins to crumble. Surrounded by smoke and fire, she passes out on the spot. When Yusuke learns of this, he begs Koenma to protect his friend. He becomes so desperate that he promises to do anything in return. 
warning him to remain faithful to his words. The deity resurrects Yusuke right before the burning house begins to fall on Keiko. Our hero then quickly wakes up and carries her to safety. After this, he rushes to fight the roundworm monster. Turns out it is soon going to turn the possessed human into a demonic creature. Koenma asks Yusuke to channel his spirit energy to kill the monster, but doesn't precisely explain how due to limited time. By this time, Kirino, the boy possessed by the beast, grows more and more aggressive and animal-like. Worried that he may become a problem, Yusuke engages him in battle. For the first few minutes, he is beaten up by the beast, but then he channels his spirit energy and eventually manages to crush the monster with his bare hands. Back in the spirit world, Koenma tells Botan that he is worried because the inexperienced teenager will now have to fight three powerful yokai thieves. We then see these three yokais, Hiei, Kuruma, and Goki, demonstrating their respective skills and stealing three powerful magical artifacts that belong to the spirit world. The scene then shifts to a playground where Goki steals the souls of little kids and stores them in the rapacious orb, one of the three artifacts stolen from the spirit realm. On the other hand, Boten and Koenma train our hero who is struggling to channel his spirit energy through his fingers a move that he calls Spirit Gun. Just then, they learn about the park incident where the souls of little kids were stolen from their bodies. This alarms the trio, so Yusuke and Botan immediately visit the children at the hospital. There, Botan reveals that the only way to help them is by bringing back their stolen souls from Goki. Yusuke is enraged by the incident, so he decides to attack the yokai without fully preparing himself. On his way out, he runs into Kazuma, who surprisingly can see Botan. Yusuke then ends up telling him the truth about the yokai from the demon world that are invading the human world. But before he can complete his information, Botan drags him out, leaving Kazuma completely bewildered. Soon after, the two meet the kid that Yusuke had earlier saved. The little kid tells him about an incident near his apartment complex. Many of the kids' friends had suddenly dropped on the playground and went lifeless without any explanation. Without further delay, Yusuke immediately heads for the apartment complex and spots Goki leaving with a black, throbbing orb. Goki notices someone stalking him and leaves the orb on the ground as bait. Yusuke runs to grab it, but is quickly attacked by Goki. The fearsome yokai then takes his real form which is a giant red demon and starts fighting our hero in the parking lot. Just then, another yokai named Kuruma shows up and watches them from afar. Despite trying his best, Yusuke simply cannot match the physicality of Goki. He attempts to use the spirit gun move, but is unable to channel its powers. Suddenly, the little boy from earlier shows up and tries to distract the beast. But this proves to be a bad idea, as Goki uses the orb and immediately snatches the kid's spirit. Taking advantage of the distraction, Yusuke jumps on Goki's neck and uses all his anger to channel the spirit gun move. After successfully bringing it out, he uses it on the monster's head, killing it brutally. With this, the magical orb releases all the souls, bringing the children back to life. Meanwhile, Kuruma watches all this go down, but doesn't interfere. That night, Mr. Gonzo visits Yukina, a young yokai that Sakyo had sent him in exchange for the land with the sinkhole. She is trapped and tortured in a cage so that Gonzo can collect her tears. It's revealed that the tears of the yokai, called tears of ice, are quite expensive because they instantly freeze upon falling to the ground. Mr. Gonzo plans to become wealthy by selling the tears. We then see Hiei, who has another stolen artifact, the Shadow Sword, with him. He strikes himself on the forehead with the sword and immediately falls to the ground, screaming in agony. Elsewhere, Kazuma sees Yusuke with Botan and overhears them talking about the third artifact, the Mirror of Darkness. The enigmatic yokai Kuruma possesses the Mirror of Darkness, an artifact so powerful that it grants any wish to the bearer on a full moon night. Later, Yusuke runs into Kuruma on the street and follows him, ultimately arriving at a hospital. Surprisingly, the yokai is here to visit his sick mother, 
who has only a few months to live. Once outside, Kuruma tells Yusuke that he had entered a pregnant woman's body years ago and had been born as a hybrid human yokai child. The woman had taken good care of him, and now he's only returning the favor by using the one wish granted by the mirror. Soon, the night of the full moon arrives, and Botan rushes to the ramen shop, asking Yusuke to hurry. She reveals a hidden secret. Anyone who uses the mirror must sacrifice their life in exchange for the wish. Alarmed, Yusuke reaches the hospital, closely followed by his arch-nemesis, Kazuma. However, they arrive too late as Kuruma has already asked for a wish and beams of bright light start swirling around the room. Yusuke jumps in and the two are transported to the underworld. Once caught in the limbo of the underworld, our hero offers half of his own life, along with Kuruma's, to save the ailing woman's life. At the same time, Hiei uses the third eye to trace the location of Yukina's tier of ice. He manages to find Gonzo's driver, who is on the way to sell off the tear and swiftly steals it. When Gonzo learns of this, he becomes enraged as he has suffered a lot of losses lately. He calls Sakyo and decides to terminate the sale of the sinkhole. However, the latter manages to convince Tarukane to come over to his island for negotiations. Here we also see two new yokai, the tall, strong, younger Taguro and a smaller, older version of him named Elder Taguro. After retrieving the Mirror of Darkness, Koenma directs Yusuke to find Hiei, who has the last missing artifact. On his directions, Yusuke arrives at the mansion of Tarukane, where Hiei greets him. The two start fighting, wherein Yusuke tries to use the spirit gun, but notices that the yokai is much faster than him. Even without drawing his sword, Hiei effectively manages to beat our hero, but goes away without punishing him further. Elsewhere, Sakyo introduces Mr. Gonzo to the two other investors of their new project, which happens to be some sort of an exclusive club. Sakyo asks for Yukina to be taken inside, but when her cage is brought in, it is revealed to be empty. The guards rush around the island looking for the valuable yokai, but one of them is secretly trying to fly her out to safety. However, the creepy elder Taguro catches them fleeing and brutally murders the guard. Meanwhile, Yusuke and Kazuma are sent to train with Master Genkai, an ancient female fighter who helps people harness their spirit energy. But the training gets off to a horrible start, as even after several attempts, Yusuke fails to channel his spirit in the form of energy. Frustrated, he questions her methods of training, calling it useless. As a result, Genkai fights the youngster to show him how incompetent he is, even when she's barely using her strength. Fourteen days pass by, and Yusuke is still not able to channel the spirit energy within himself. Genkai is disappointed in his performance and tells Botan all about it. That night, Yusuke sees Kazuma practicing with a wooden stick relentlessly and wonders what is going on in his head. Kazuma is determined to beat the evil yokai as well as be more powerful than Yusuke. He ends up using the wooden stick with determination and manages to channel the spirit energy, breaking the massive rock. This prompts Yusuke to try harder, and he uses the spirit energy to stand upside down on the tip of his index finger. This finally impresses Genkai, and she teaches him to shoot the spirit gun on command. On the other end of the city, Younger Taguro feels a surge of energy flowing from somewhere and decides to visit Genkai. However, the old master senses his arrival beforehand and sends her two pupils back. Before saying goodbye, she gives Yusuke the spirit orb, her most potent weapon. That night, younger Toguro arrives at Genkai's shrine and challenges her to a fight. The old master is no match for him and is eventually killed. After a couple of days, as Yusuke is walking out of a ramen shop, he notices Hiei kidnapping Keiko. Alarmed, he chases after them and eventually finds Hiei sitting by a factory site. The two then engage in a deadly battle until Kurama stops them. He tells Yusuke that the person who kidnapped Keiko was one of Sakyo's demons disguised as Hiei. He then adds that Sakyo has also kidnapped Hiei's sister, Yukina, and kept both the girls in the same location. 
Soon enough, they receive an invitation from the shady businessman to come to his island, but the reason for it is unknown. Kazuma joins the trio of Yusuke, Kurama, and Hiei, and we see that they are received by Sakyo's henchmen near the dockyard. On the ship to Kubi Kukuri Island, Yusuke learns that Sakyo is going to keep Keiko alive only if he manages to defeat the yokai monsters. Karuma then concludes that the wealthy investors have come up with a gladiator-style tournament where they can bid money on the yokai's fate. As soon as they reach the island, Hiei decides to go his own way and fight alone. Meanwhile, Yusuke, Kuruma, and Kazuma enter the grounds of Sakyo's mansion together. Soon enough, the trio are greeted by Karasu, a yokai with the power of energy blasts. Kuruma decides to take on this challenge and tells the two to move ahead. On the other side of the island, Hiei encounters Bui, a giant yokai with a large axe and heavy armor. Going further inside, Kazuma and Yusuke split as they start looking for the girls. Meanwhile, Karasu's energy bombs overwhelm Kuruma, so he decides to take his original yokai form, a white, lightning-fast form with immense power over monstrous plants. This helps him gain the upper hand for a while, but soon he comes back to his human form. Kuruma has already spent a lot of energy trying to trap his adversary. Even though he is now weaker, he runs towards Karasu and pierces his opponent's palm with a venomous thorn. Slowly, numerous plants start to expand their roots inside Karasu's body and pierce the blood vessels, ultimately killing the demon. On the other hand, Hiei starts to punish Bui with his incredible pace and agility. Infuriated, the latter takes off his heavy armor and charges with his total capacity. The giant yokai was already stronger beforehand, but now he's faster too. With one sweeping blow, he easily manages to knock his opponent across multiple walls. But to his shock, Hiei wakes up once more and unwraps his arm, which possesses the power of a fire snake. With this new power, Hiei manages to kill Bui, but sustains heavy injuries to his right arm. Elsewhere on the island, Keiko pretends to be injured and attacks a guard, who leaves the door open behind himself to check on her. She manages to free herself and Yukina, but unbeknownst to them, Sakyo keeps an eye on them through his security cameras. The two girls ultimately run into Kazuma, but find themselves confronted by a huge dog-like demon. After being chased around for a while, they ultimately manage to flee by sliding through a metal door. But luck is not so kind to them as they soon run into the creepy elder Toguro, who can manipulate his body in any way he wishes. In the meantime, Yusuke ends up in the central arena as an opponent for younger Toguro. Sakyo asks the investors to triple their bets on the Toguro brothers, as he sneakily launches the machines that would eventually merge the demon and the human worlds. In the next scene, Yusuke uses all his might to fight younger Toguro. Some of his punches get through, but they have no effect on the yokai. Just as Yusuke starts to lose hope, Hiei and Kurama show up and join the attack. The trio use all their power and attack younger Toguro but even this is not enough to provoke him. Meanwhile, as everyone is distracted, Sakyo takes this opportunity to merge the demon and human worlds. When Koenma learns of this, he makes a temporary protection around the island to save the human world from the yokai. However, since the shell won't stop Sakyo's machine for long, he appears on Kubi Kukuri Island. Koenma then strikes a deal with Sakyo, who promises to shut his machine down only if Yusuke and his friends can defeat the Togoro brothers. Meanwhile, after running away from Elder Togoro, Kazuma and the girls end up reaching the main arena, where a fierce battle is going on. Excited by the violence, Elder Togoro reveals how Genkai and younger Togoro were friends when the latter was a human. He then gleefully narrates how his brother killed the old master just a few days ago. Younger Toguro, on the other hand, gets upset with the Elder for bringing Genkai up, so he kills him with his own hands. The news of Genkai's death strikes Yusuke hard, and he grows extremely angry. Once again, he gets up and attacks Younger Toguro with the power of the spirit orb that his master gave him. This finally provokes his yokai opponent enough to bring out his true form. 
a muscular giant who is immensely larger and more destructive than his old self. Younger Taguro has always wanted to fight someone who can match him toe to toe. Hence, he kills Kazuma with a single devastating punch just to bring out the dormant power in Yusuke. Witnessing the death of his friend, Yusuke punches the monster with all his might and channels the spirit world's energy to his final spirit gun. A huge amount of unrestricted energy releases from this attack, which pushes younger Taguro backwards. He manages to contain the explosive power with the spirit bomb for a while, but eventually gets burnt and collapses to the ground. Before passing away, he thanks Yusuke for allowing him to unleash his true power for once. In the aftermath of the battle, Yukina resurrects Kazuma with her powers. Meanwhile, Sakyo stops his engine and the two worlds remain separate. He then kills himself with a bullet to the head. The show ends as the four boys, Yukina and Keiko, get into a boat to go back to their respective homes. In the afterlife, younger Taguro walks down the path of the demon world and surprisingly finds Genkai waiting for him there.